Welcome everybody. Welcome back to Homestead Heart. And y'all, I'm still outside. But this time you all, I am actually out here planting some Moringa, okay? Now these are my seeds right here. And I have had all of my Moringa seeds soaking in water for the last two days. They've just been sitting in, I put some warm water in a jar with a lid on it. And all of these seeds have been soaking in the jar for two days. And then after that two day period, I literally drained the water off of them and left them in the jar for another day. So this was like a three day process. Now, why did I do it that way? It was by accident. <laughs> I soaked them for two days on purpose. I did, I soaked them for two days on purpose. But when I drained the water off of them, I had every intention of starting the seeds that day, but I didn't get around to it. And that's okay, they was fine. And actually, I really liked it. I really liked doing it that way because I don't know if it made a difference or not, but they was just sitting there. And then the little wings that's uh, typically on the seeds, they all started to come off. And the seeds, I wish I could find one, but the seeds just started to crack open, like this one right here. Let me show you, having them in that water for two days, look, it just started to, the shell just started to come off, right? And so I just love that. And, and I think now, instead of soaking them for 24 hours, I'm gonna soak them for 48 on purpose this time <laughs> but anyway y'all so now I have my little cups here and they're filled with the soil already you know I just did a video um, I was uh, actually talking about there's no better time like the present than to start your own vegetable garden right now right but the moringa I decided that I would actually try to start growing more moringa so that I can make the leaves available. Now the climate that we live in will not allow for Moringa to actually go to seed, right? And produce those um, beautiful, uh, what they call them things? Them pods with all the Moringa seeds in them. They about this long. I forgot what they call them, but y'all know what I'm, somebody posted in the comment section below and remind me of what I'm talking about. All right, you're gonna go for a swim. Anyway, <laughs> so you all, so what I'm doing now is just simply getting the seed started. And I think we've uh, picked out a nice spot where we can grow um, several trees at once because you know, we only had three in the uh, raised beds, right? And those three trees, I think we lost one but those trees were barely enough for us to have enough Moringa to get us through to the next season. I'm completely out. Cause the tea, I absolutely love the tea. And you can even take the powder from the Moringa and grind the leaves, right? Once you grind the leaves into a powder, you take that powder and add it to soups and stews for an extra nutritional um, benefit or extra nutri nutritional kick inside of your cooked foods. So, what I'm doing is I'm starting way more because so many of you said, Mrs. H, can you send me some? I'll pay for it, but we just didn't have enough to share. So we're hoping that this time around that I'm gonna, you know, see if we will have enough to share this time because I'm starting way more than I did two years ago because the Moringa that we grew this past season, it was just a uh, Moringa that we had, you know, that kind of regrew from the last time because it actually, once you cut that Moringa down um, in, this, in this zone rather, I think in zone eight, maybe seven, eight, maybe seven, I'm not sure. But I know for sure zone eight, nine, and 10, you can cut that stalk down and it will overwinter and it will do some, it will give you some shoots and it will restart reproducing a whole new Moringa tree. And so the ones that we have in the raised bed, we do not have to worry about those. I know that we will get some Moringa from those again because our winter this year has been so mild. Um, yeah, I'm really concerned about that, you know, because I mean, we can appreciate the winter around here for several different reasons, right? But that's a, a topic for another day. But in any case, we've had a mild winter and so I think those Moringa trees will be just fine. We did have those few days where we were down in the 
low low 20s but that only lasted a few days so i don't think it lasted long enough to literally just kill the tree altogether. but in any case i've got my little cups going here with my potting mix that i already made all right now in this potting mix i did equal parts um, i used a kill-off seed starting mix uh, some worm casting and some perlite you can use vermiculite if you choose or you can use them both just make sure that you use the consistency is equal parts okay now i've already started putting my little holes in and i'm just choosing the largest of the seed because some of them are so small that i'm not going to even worry about planting something that small i'm literally looking for larger seed i'm telling y'all look at this soaking them like that look soaking them like that look it's just peeling right off and that's two days now if you remember the first time i started moringa i only soaked them for 24 hours right and it was very tough getting that outer shell off in fact i damaged a lot of the moringa trying to get the outer shell off of it after soaking it for 24 hours now that was for the 2021 gardening season and so now for the 2023 gardening season i'm learning that if i soak them a little bit longer i don't have to work so hard right because actually you don't really have to peel this off right look at this it just cracked on its own from being in that water for so long look i like that you actually don't have to peel them at all um they will come out of the shell on their own it's a seed right however they will germinate a lot faster if you can remove that outer hull that outer shell so two days i'm finding is the best time to soak the moringa in warm water in a jar and just leave them there for a couple of days and then i don't even know if uh, the fact that i soaked them for two days because i didn't check them and then i just left them in the jar for an extra day i don't know if that extra day of doing them that way made any kind of a difference i'm not really sure but i think i'm gonna intentionally <laughs> do it that way going forward i'm gonna soak them for two days drain the water leave them in the jar for an extra day and then plant them i think i'm gonna do that on purpose next time so y'all i'm just gonna go ahead now and get all of my seeds in i'm not gonna worry about trying to peel them i'm just gonna drop them in the ones where the shell is splitting that's good i'll get those in man oh wow look at that i mean this this shell literally is just saying look i'm coming off whether you want me to or not and i guess i should have tried to pay attention to see if the ones without the shell will germinate oh, i damaged it oh man will germinate a lot faster than the ones that i don't peel and i'm actually pretty sure that they're going to all germinate the same because of the fact that i soaked them for so very long so this is a tray right here how many is this 32 is what i have here this is 32 hope hopefully 32 moringa moringa trees that will be getting started and i am going to plant way more than this because the fact of the matter is some will make it and some will not in fact some the last time that we planted these the first time actually when we planted them we had some to do just fine and they started growing and all of them were growing well together then all of a sudden they just thought some of them just died and i'm i'm not sure why some of them just started dying so i'm gonna plant way more than what i want in hopes that i will get the amount of trees that we are going for in order to be able to have enough to share the moringa leaves okay so we'll keep our We'll keep our toes and fingers crossed <laughs> for that and just see what happens. 
But yeah, I'm getting all of these covered. Now, now, if you're going to start your Moringa seeds now, you all, where do we get Moringas? I know they have Moringa seed available at Baker Creek. Someone sent these seeds to me. They gifted these to me so that I could grow more Moringa. So, I'm going to try these out. Now, I know that you can um get moringa seeds from baker creek um i think they're running like three or four dollars for like 10 or 15 seeds in a pack so if you want to grow your own you can certainly get you some seeds from rare seeds and grow your own and these little trees you don't have to let them get big i know we see some moringa farms and the trees are like 12 feet tall right 12 feet tall and ours were six feet i think we no they were still growing we cut them at six feet because we didn't want them to get any taller than that all right entire tray all planted and i'm gonna water these babies and then once I water them, I'm actually going to take these inside. I'm going to cover them with saran wrap, nice and tight, and then put them under grow lights. So I'm going to water them, saran wrap them because I don't have a humidity dome. But I'm here to tell you, humidity domes are expensive. Saran wrap is a whole lot cheaper than buying all them domes. <laughs> Now these tray, these right here, y'all know I got these from Bootstrap Farmer. I think I have a, a, a link that I can put in the description box uh, below for you if you're wanting to get some of these little pots like this, okay? And these right here, I'm gonna plant my other set of Moringa in these right here. These were free, 99, okay? And somebody said when I said you can get your seed starting pots free, from like Lowe's or Home Depot, they give them away. Somebody said they didn't start charging for them things. Ain't that something? Wow. You would think that at any, if there was an opportunity for them to be able to help anybody, they would take advantage of that opportunity. But no, they just got to charge for everything. Because guess what? If you don't buy them, what they going to do with them? Throw them in the trash. Yep, they're going to throw them in the trash. But they always trying to make a buck, right? But anyway, you all, I don't know if that's true or not, but you can always check and see from Lowe's and Home Depot. It's that time of year where all of the gardening supplies and whatnot is being loaded and stocked inside of the stores. So you all, in another video, Mr. H and I, we decided that we we're gonna show you all the gardening tools that we have that we use the most out of all of the gardening tools that we have. There's some that we just use all the time and others we have not put our hands on, right? So you kind of learn what works best for you, what you're comfortable using the most. And we're going to talk about that in another video too, you all. But I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to sit this tray to the side. Grab my next tray so that I can get started with putting in my next batch of moringa seed and another thing i'm going to tell you about this as well you all one of the things that i also learned about planting moringa like when i put my um seed starting mix in my tray for the moringa i noticed that if you compact the mix too tightly or if you compact it period it, your moringa struggles i learned that through trial and error i want to show you how loosely packed i got my soil in here okay look at this see how how easy it is for me my finger to go down in that soil there is no resistance there at all and i know the thing has been to you know pack it down in there good make sure there's no air right but i found that that's not a good idea when growing moringa they don't like it and so I just put it in there and I cover and then I tamp it down. 
real good and then when it if it goes down below the line that i want it to be at or the level that i want it to be at i'll just add a little more on the top and tamp it down and if it's too high i just scrape it off but i do not press it down the moringa seeds do not take kindly to that at all okay so that's something that i have learned over time with growing or with starting the moringa seed and I've tested this out actually because um, I want to say a couple of months ago I, I started some moringa seeds just trying it out doing different things and I'm here to tell you that's how I learned they don't care for that packed down soil and so some of them struggled to come up and and there was no reason for it really but some of them struggled to come up and I said okay let me start another one and I didn't pack the soil in and when I put them in 90% of them came up yeah now of course they weren't gonna make it through the winter I didn't have nowhere to keep uh, 72 trees in the house <laughs> it was an experiment since I was gifted the seeds it was an experiment so I tried it and I'm here to tell you that I think that they do not like that compact or tightly packed soil. And whatever you do, do not put more than one seed in a cell, okay? Don't overcrowd. Don't overcrowd either. Make sure you give them their own space. And also, you all, trying to find the ones that's already cracked open. Also, you all, um, make sure, I don't know if I said this already or not, but um, make sure that if you do plant them in cells this size, and you start them indoors, be prepared to up-pot them, okay? You don't want them to get root-bound. So if you are able to get your hands on some uh, four inch, <laughs> you're able to get your hands on some four inch nursery pots do that and and just be prepared to up pot them depending on how fast they grow and now is the time to start them because you do want to get these in the ground asap after that last frost because you want to get the roots stable and um what's the word i'm you looking for here i can't think of it right now but you want to get those roots down in the ground so they can start uh, so they can start growing yeah that one looks really good i mean i don't know if y'all can see the crack in it whoops come on it's not gonna focus but anyway, you want to get those roots in the ground at, as soon as that last frost is over because establish is the word that I'm looking for because you want your tree to get growing as quickly as possible just in case you have a short growing season. A short growing season or not, you can grow this and you can even grow it in a container. Look, where is my container? Excuse me. I'll be right back. Y'all know I'm not editing. Here I come. Here I come. Here I come. Here I come. All right. Now, y'all remember these tubs right here that we got from the laundry department at Wally World, right? Five or six bucks, right? I don't know how much they cost now. But this is, you can plant your, I think it's 17 gallons. And they do have some that are a lot sturdier, but they do cost a little bit more money. They like $35 or something like that. You can put that Moringa in a container and it will overwinter in the container, either in a nice greenhouse or inside of your home, right? So you can overwinter it if you like, but if you plant it in a nice location, and mulch it heavy, which is why when I um, use 
the potting mix where I'm actually sifting the Kellogg's raised bed potting mix, all of that mulch comes in handy because I can use it to mulch my moringa trees once they get established and get maybe a foot or so two up out of the ground. Then I can mulch it pretty good and not have to worry about watering it so much either, right? So y'all, I think that's gonna do it for this video. I just wanted to share with y'all that I was getting ready to start Moringa. And yes, you wanna start this indoors if you live in a zone or a climate like mine, you wanna start it indoor. Uh -uh. Hey, don't you. using my pot as a little box i'm not having it this time but you do want to go ahead and get them started now you all if you're planning on um growing moringa you want to get those seeds going right now like yesterday get them under lights so that after your last frost they'll be ready to transplant outside into the ground okay so I'm just gonna get these covered up and then I'm gonna get these babies inside. Well, I gotta water them first. Gotta soak them real good because once you soak them really good and you cover them with that saran wrap, you don't have to worry about watering them from the top. You just put a little water in the bottom of the tray and they will water from the bottom up so you don't have to take the saran wrap off until you see the seed sprout and in that tray when you see the seed starting to sprout all of them may or may not come up but you need to remove the saran wrap okay the day you see them sprouting it doesn't matter if all of them have not sprouted you need to remove the saran wrap right then and there. All right. And make sure that that grow light is very close. I think my grow lights are about, I don't know, maybe four inches above the tray. Maybe four inches above the trays that I have in there now. And I may show you, I think I'll show you all that what it looks like so that you all can see what my little growing setup looks like now. I've upgraded, I, I, done, I done upgraded and elevated a little bit. <laughs> Y'all remember how I used to do it. I had to upgrade a little bit for better success. But you wanna make sure you get that saran wrap off of them right away. Make sure the bottom tray has at least an inch of water in the bottom so that they can continue to be moist you don't you do not want these to dry out okay do not let them dry out because that will be a big problem for you all right you'll have possibly have to start the seeds all over again and you don't want to do that because it takes such a, a good little while for them to get together and decide that they're gonna germinate all right so i'm gonna start my last tray of moringa but i just wanted to show you all how easy it is to start your own moringa seeds at home. You can grow it in a container. You don't have to let it get that tall. You can plant them, I would say, if you're gonna plant them in rows at home, I would say you wanna give them, I would say maybe two to three feet apart, all right? But that's with them being really small. That means that you're not gonna let them get no taller than four feet, planting them that close. You want them to get a little bit bigger and a little bit bushier, then you give them a little more space and make sure you cut them off at about five feet and they will continue to produce from the main stalk of the tree or the main, um, y'all know what I'm saying, from the tree. They'll continue to produce and you just break them off as they, um, you know, as they get bigger, you just break off the entire stem and it will just turn around and produce some more really, really quick for you, okay? So you all, that's gonna do it for this Moringa video all about me starting my moringa trees i'm so excited i've picked out a nice spot i think 
Mr. H seems to think it's a good spot. So we'll see how everything goes. All right, y'all. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and give our video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that we upload to our channel. Thank you all so much again for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you and I'm going to see y'all in the next video.